Hey everyone, I'm Victor Frost, and welcome to Steven Universe Universe, the show where we talk about the universe of Steven Universe. First things first, the news. So, this upcoming week is going to be exciting. According to Cartoon Network, the Steven Universe crew, and TVGuide.com's online TV listings, every weeknight this upcoming week, that is to say Monday through Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, is going to have a brand new episode of Steven Universe. This is going to be awesome. They're calling it the Steven Bomb because, I don't know, it's a cluster bomb of Steven Universe, I guess. Anyways, here's the breakdown. Monday is going to hold Rose's Scabbard. Tuesday will play The Message. Wednesday is going to have some political power. Thursday we can expect the return and the jailbreak. And Friday we're finally going to get full disclosure. Now, judging by tweets from writer Matt Burnett, this is going to mark the end of season two for Steven Yu. Huh, that rhymed. He tweeted out that the episodes Open Book and Shirk Club were, quote, deemed too good to air, end quote. Now, whether this means that they were literally pulled from the schedule or they were pushed into season three for whatever reason, being production or scheduling, we don't know. But we can infer that the plots of those specific episodes were episodic enough that it didn't matter if they were pulled or that they were non-essential to this current major arc. Now, with this barrage of new episodes coming up next week, I'm going to be releasing much shorter episodes of Steven Universe Universe. Uh, that would mean no reviews, no news, just analysis. And probably a lot less of these wonderful images I love having in the video. Gotta keep production time down somehow. But don't worry, there will always be the spoiler warning for those of you who may stumble upon the video without seeing the episode first. Speaking of, it's now time for us to look at the latest episode and see what we learned. If you haven't seen the episode Marble Madness, now is your chance to pause this video, go watch that one, then come on back. Don't worry, we'll wait. Meanwhile, this is your spoiler alert. Beyond this point, who knows what could happen? So, new episode, new lore. Let's see what we learned. First things first, we got yet another bit of fiction in fiction with the Spirit Morph Saga. Now it sounds like their version of Harry Potter, but more awesome because it's got a talking falcon named Archimicorus. And if that name doesn't make you chuckle even just a little bit, maybe you need a thousand years of no TV so you can get some reading on. Also, the irony of Steven not understanding what a familiar is it was not lost on poor, poor Connie. How he got lost in the sequence of books though is beyond me, I mean he seemed to be paying real close attention to that cover, but he missed the book numbers on the cover? I don't know, Steven being Steven I guess. We also found out the name of the island from Island Adventure, Mask Island, which you know makes sense considering the creatures that we saw from the worms to the fishes all were pretty much wearing the same face. We also learned that the events in the kindergarten took place around 6,000 years ago, which means that Amethyst is about 6,000 years old and that Pearl and Garnet are much, much older. To give you some context, 6,000 years ago, wheeled vehicles were the cutting edge of technology, which gives us an interesting insight into what we learn next. One of the biggest things we got to look at, character-wise, was how the gems react when they don't know something. Here they are, these super old advanced creatures who have been on this planet basically the entirety of human civilization. Modern pop culture notwithstanding, it's pretty safe to say they are experts on everything and anything Earth. Nothing is new, nothing is surprising. And now suddenly, here they are having been thrust into a situation where they are completely out of their depth. We don't know. They just keep coming and coming, and we don't even know what they are. We don't know anything. Then Steven comes in, and he knows exactly what to do. What? Okay, maybe he doesn't know exactly what to do, but that's okay, because he knows how to look for answers to problems. The other gems have been relying on their vast amount of experience and knowledge for so long, that it seems like they have forgotten how to deal with unfamiliar problems. 
In contrast, Stephen's constant journey living a life where everything is new and a mystery has taught him how to learn. If Stephen doesn't know how to deal with a situation, he at least knows who to ask or even just to sit back and watch the situation unfold and learn from that. In a lot of ways, Stephen is like an outside consultant for the Crystal Gems. It's a consultant's job to parachute into an organization unaffected by the internal orthodoxy of the group and then look at problems with a perspective that is completely outside of the norm for that group. It's a consultant that can ask, well, can gems fuse with humans? Hear no, and then say, well, why not? Whereas a person inside of the organization would have never even thought to ask that question in the first place. This is why I believe Rose created Steven in the first place. See, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl have about 6,000 plus years of prior expectations and biases and conceptions that Steven just doesn't have. Which makes him great at solving problems that the others can't, because he has such a unique perspective inside of the group. We've seen examples of this tons of times, be it in Cat Fingers or Cheeseburger Backpack or Monster Buddies, all examples of Steven being an out of the box idea machine. Finally, we learned that the Gem Empire has not been standing still all this time. They've been advancing, at least technologically, to the point where the artifacts left behind on Earth seem archaic to Peridot. In fact, Peridot has been trying to get Earth back online for quite some time now, all the way back to Episode 2 with the Red Eye. And she has not been pleased with how, well, the gems have been treating her stuff. However, all this led up to one of the funniest and also more interesting moments of the episode. It seems like the gems on Homeworld have no idea who the crystal gems even are, and Peridot seems surprised that there were any gems there at all. More than that, her database said that all gems were eradicated from Earth, and that she called the technology Gem Tech. Maybe this is just a semantic error, but it seems like she doesn't identify as a gem. I mean, after all, wouldn't a gem just call it tech? So, as usual, with every answer comes more questions. But it seems like we'll get some of them sorted out next week, as it seems like the season is coming to a close. Join us on Monday when we cover Rose's Scabbard. I'm Victor Frost, and I'll see you next time on Steven Universe Universe. Welcome to Behind the Screen, where we break apart media and see how it was made and why it was made the way it was. This is a production analysis show, which means that where shows like Nostalgia Critic might take a movie and read into the deeper meaning of the narrative, we do things like look at the movie and see how choices in the sound levels of the film might make it difficult for a home audience to watch. 2001 A Space Odyssey, I'm looking right at you.